issues raised at prior council meetings. Uh, none at this time. Special events application, Leisha. Good evening, Mayor and Council. The first application before you is a request from BNA to hold their community day on July 15th. Second is the Man Up competition on June 17th. Third is Choose Your Cover, which is a free skin, skin cancer screening and education event. And fourth is Blue Bishop Outreach Day, which will be on August 19th on Springwood Avenue. Are there any questions? Yes? Yes, I have just one. Mm -hmm. On the, um, the Blue Bishop Outreach Day, are you, are you closing down Springwood Avenue? That's the request, a right. portion of Springwood. Okay. Thank you. Review of this evening's agenda. <coughs> Thank you, Madam Clerk. Resolution 2017-155 is a special events application. Um, resolution 2017-156 is an RCA agreement for 1215 Summerfield Avenue for um, repairs. Resolution 157 is for the collector to mail and prepare the estimated tax bills um, in accordance with state law. Is there any questions on the consent items? Uh, on the individual resolutions, 2017-158 is amending the temporary budget. Oops, I just lost my page. Um, as, you know, as we continue through this year, the state um, fiscal monitor has informed us that they've been now starting the internal discussions on what the transitional aid award should be, so we should have an idea um, as we move a little bit closer to June. Resolution 27 2017-159 is the payment of bills. Resolution 2017-160 is a resolution issue authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $7 million in tax anticipation notes. Um, a TAN note is where a municipality borrows money if we don't, if they're not receiving enough um, revenue. This has been done for the last probably 10 years in the city. Um, last year was a year we did not need this, but we like to have it that in case we are having a shortfall of cash, we have money to pay our bills. Um, this is only authorized if we need it. This is just the step that if we need money, we can go ahead and do this. Um, but we don't anticipate it, but we just like to have it authorized. Um, resolution 2017-161 is the um, payments for former Deputy Chief Anthony Salerno for his unused time. Resolution 2017-162 is the extended warranty for our existing parking meters. Um, right now, as you know, we're in the trial period for um, two or three different vendors for, for meters. It's going well. We've had some comments from people. Uh, resolution 2017-163 is a lease agreement for the temporary restroom trailers that are on iStar property. These have been there for approximately three years and we're doing some house cleaning, cle house cleaning and finalizing this lease agreement to make it official. Um, resolution 2017-164 authorizes us to go out for competitive contracting on Deal Lake. If you remember, there previously was a paddle board, paddle board uh, company there the the contract sunset we put this out to bid last year there was no respondents this year we've actually had two companies um, with interest in doing something on the lake and i don't remember fred what the minimum amounts were was it a thousand fifteen hundred and two thousand for for the three years um, with paying the attorney's legal fees and the concession bid will have that they must pay the pre the next this the next year up front so the city doesn't lose any money at, um, in that situation. Resolution. No, hold on a second. It, it, it should read that they have to put an escrow of 2000 because the 2000 is the 
third year the most expensive last year. Okay. The last year. So in case they beat us on the last year, we don't get a thousand, we get two thousand. I mean, okay. we didn't have this in the last one and the guy beat us out of ten thousand. So Yeah, that would be in the in the, the requirements of the, the concession fee. We added those provisions in the uh, concessions that were put out to bid last year. Correct. Last year, as you mentioned, nobody bid on this one, but we have had interest in not just paddle boarding, but kayaking and other recreational devices. Mm -hmm. Right, okay. Resolutions 165 through 168 are um, the responses that the city received going out for through the fair and open process for these professional services contracts, the public defender, the the city code enforcement prosecutor, the alternate city prosecutor, and the city prosecutor. Um, one thing to note, once ordinance, uh, resolution 167, the alternate city prosecutor, that is required by Supreme Court regulation, so it has to be appointed. Um, is there any questions on any of the resolutions? And then for Second reading is Ordinance 2017-18, which is permitting um, accessory uses for the LI zone and prohibiting commercial drive-throughs in the B2 zone. Uh, this was discussed at the last meeting where the planning board determined that this meets um, the requirements of the master plan and voted to recommend approval for this. This allows outdoor seating in the LI zone. And that's all. on to matters by the City Council. Okay, I was asked to announce that on Saturday, the Chamber of Commerce and Madison Marquette are sponsoring a family kite day. Um, it's free and it's going to be from the hours of 11 to 4 and on, at the 6th Avenue Beach and everybody's welcome. I don't know if they're providing kites or what, but it's going to take place on Saturday. Um, there are going to be public meetings on May 15th and May 16th to discuss workforce development and we're asking the public to come out and give us their input and their support. The May 15th meeting is going to be at the Senior Center from 6.30 to 8 p.m. And the May 15th meet, 16th meeting, which is Tuesday, will be here in the City Council Chambers, and that's going to be from 9 to 10.30 a.m. And lastly, on a serious note, this past Saturday, members of the council participated in a march, and it was a march that commemorated the death of a young girl, Kiana D. And this is the 25th year that her mother has sponsored this march. It is not a closed case. <coughs> we believe that somebody knows something. If you know something, if you have a memory, if you think you know something, we're asking that you would please contact the Monmouth County Prosecutor's Office and give this family closure. Thank you. Well, as we know, a mo Mother's Day is this coming Sunday, so happy Mother's Day to the ones that have, that have children. Happy Mother's Day to your mother. Happy Mother's Day to your wife. That's all I have to say. Um, it, in addition to um, the Kiana D book, which um, you know, I think all of us went. It. We also had another. Uh, what was the 24th New Jersey AIDS walk um, by the center, um, who continue to be in need of donations and provide really amazing services for people living with HIV or AIDS. Friday night was a pink prom event at the Tide, which raised money for a number of organizations in town. As well, so this weekend we had um, some really um, passionate and <coughs> and great events in Asbury Park. That's it. So, okay, so I have a question. So, Monday the fifteenth and Tuesday the sixteenth is 
workforce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, how are we advertising that? Because I'm, if I'm just hearing about it today, or maybe our six there should be a press days. release coming out. And yeah, but okay, and a lot of people in Asbury Park that maybe need this don't have computers, don't have read the papers. Are we taking them to barber shops? Are we taking them to churches? We can. We will. We will. Mm -hmm. So we got to do that between now and Friday. Okay, we'll be done. Okay. What time is it? Monday at 6.30 to 8. At the yeah, seniors? there has been at, there at the senior center. And Tuesday it's 9.30, 9 o'clock to 10.30 here in the council chamber. Okay, the more we get that out, because the better. Thank you. That's all I have. Managed by the city manager. Uh, we are going to be hiring another code enforcement officer. So anyone that is interested, please apply. Um, we anticipate a full-time position and maybe a part-time position. Um, it's going to be a rolling interview process because we so we can get someone up as soon as possible. Um, but please, at least just fill out the application that's on our website, or just submit a little letter of interest to myself or Mary Kay Callahan, who's personnel officer, and we're going to look to hire someone as soon as we can. That's all. Managed by the city attorney. I have nothing at this point. We'll adjourn until 7 o'clock for the regular meeting. We'll do the roll call. Councilmember Chapman. Councilmember Clayton. Here. Councilmember Kendall. Here. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Here. Mayor Moore. Here. Please rise for a silent prayer moment of reflection, please. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided in the following manner. The annual notice was forwarded to the Asbury Park Press, the Coaster, and the Star Ledger on January 3, 2017, and posted on a bulletin board the same date. All notices are all filed with the city clerk. We'll now move on to public participation. Any member who wishes to speak in the public, please come to the mic. Each member has three minutes to speak. And when you come to the mic, please state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Robert Weiner, 601 Madison. I'm going to try to get this done in three minutes. Uh, this is not an attack on Carter Sackman. I was his first owner in the Post Building, and I give him great credit for everything he's done to bring back the downtown. This isn't even an attack on his proposal for the slot building was actually remove my views of Ocean Grove. It is, however, my, my serious concern on what Carter's many proposals will do regarding cars and parking in the town. Carter has a financial interest, either as a landlord or some equity, in seven restaurants that sell liquor, a new distillery, a downtown theater, two more restaurants coming on board replacing Fish and Chibo, 16 other retail establishments, is the landlord for the Asbury Park Press Building, where he rents office space. There are no parking requirements for any of these businesses. It is in Carter's best interest to bring as many new residents to town as possible. Carter currently has, or is building, condos on Lake Avenue, condos now being built on Bangs Avenue and Bond, maybe even with a supermarket, condos for the slot building, uh, apartments in a major theater on Madison Avenue in the Savoy. Uh, the last number I saw was 64 apartments that may have changed. Uh, uh, to quote Rita, th this is crazy. We need one person, and I'm saying that again, one person to put these projects on the map of this tiny downtown. If you look at a map of the downtown and just see where Carter is building, it's frightening. Beginning, we need, for each of these projects, beginning dates, construction time for each project, what is the shortfall for each product, uh, park project regarding parking? How many spots will be lost for dumpsters, cranes, trucks, deliveries, and for how long? And as for the parking garage that he claims will solve all these issues, what are we going to do with the 83 cars currently in the lot for the one to two years that this is being built? Let's not look back in a few years and say, how did this happen? I think we need a Carter Sackman Carter czar representing the city to look at every single project in totality 
and not when he goes to each project individually before the planning board. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. The only thing I'm going to say to that, Robert, is um, a lot of, certainly at least three or four of the projects that you mentioned, including the grocery store, the um, most recent uh, one with the Barry Slap building, and the Savoy, you know, a number of those projects are, when he comes in front of us, are for conceptual design, which is what he's essentially doing is taking our temperature to see if we like it, but it's not being passed. There's well, no redevelopment agreement. I understand. You know, that. he just, my guess, is trying to take our temperature to see if we like the project to move forward with redevelopment agreement where we put in parking or we put in affordable housing or we put in whatever it is that we put in. See, I, I don't care if he pays $2 million in fines for not having enough parking spot. That's not going to, that's not the issue. The issue is what this is going to do to the town. And that's why I'm saying everybody, I don't know if anybody's looking at this in totality. When you look at what he's trying to do and you look at the map, and th what is it, five square blocks? He's had six projects going in five square blocks. And I didn't even mention the building that he owns on Bangs and Emory that he's not giving his people a lease because he's planning to do something there. So I want somebody to be in charge to look at everything he's doing, when he's doing it, and what the effect on the town is whether it goes through or not. So that's, that was my point. Thank okay. you. Hi, Marty Bradshaw from Burns Bradshaw Realtors, 1508 Main Street. Um, last week I was mailed a new uh, mercantile license. Thank you, Cindy, for mailing it out. And it now, s my new license says license type professional service. So thank you for that. Um, so I'm now requesting a refund of the mercantile license fee that I paid for last year because I'm now correctly classified as a professional service and professional services were not on the mercantile list for 2016. They were just added on the new list for 2017. So you know, I paid an air, I did pay it last year because, um, oh, and this was uh, all uh, documented in the uh, Asbury Park Sun and also in the coaster. Uh, after the first time I came here in 2016 and made my case, uh, Michelle Gladden wrote in the Sun, and I'm quoting here, she said, um, if the law, uh, Mayor Moore said, if the law is in error, real estate offices will be refunded. And so obviously now you've decided the realtors are considered professional services. It's different from just a real estate agent. So professional services were not on the mercantile list for 2016. So I paid the $100 so I should get a refund. And also it was in the coaster um, on March 3rd of 2016. She wrote, uh, City Manager Michael Capabianco urged Bradshaw to pay the fees by March 1st to avoid paying a fine, but said the fee would be refunded if requirements changed. So, and I, I'd be glad to give you the copies I have here of that. So, do I need to do anything in particular to get a refund? What's the process? Let us look into it and we'll get back to you. Because the way I remember it is in 2016, real estate agents were listed. Mm -hmm. And so you paid under a real estate agent last year. But I was making my case at four meetings. I came here four times in 2016. I was making my case that realtors are different from real estate agents. It's two different things. Realtors are, have always been considered professional offices. Under the old definition, they were professional offices, and under your new definition, I'm, I'm a professional office. So being classified as a real estate agent for 2016, 2016 that was, you know, an error. Realtors, sh realtors are not the same as, as real estate agents. In fact, there's a big, co there's a commercial on TV these days I see it all the time, a, a well-known actor. He, he's, um, you know, it's a commercial for the National Association of Realtors, and he says that exact s 
the exact statement I just made. He says, realtors are different from real estate agents. You've probably all seen that commercial on TV. Okay, we'll, we'll look into it, and if you do a refund, you get it. Okay, so is someone gonna, should I contact the city manager, or, or what? Give, give us a week. Okay, then I'll contact the Somebody city. Somebody will contact Who? you. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Tracy Rogers, uh, <coughs> Summerfield. I mean, Spring Lake, I'm sorry, <laughs> Spring Lake. Uh, going to the planning board meeting uh, under Sackman's uh, approval, I listened for almost 20 minutes to a half an hour on the requirements of parking. And I was devastated because I understand we have a parking committee to see that little things were not fixed uh, in evaluating the parking situation. I made the mistake of going through the 100 page 2015 report would actually had numerous things that need to be addressed in parking in the city of Asbury. In the downtown district, when you're looking and evaluating parking, there has to be an understanding as to who these people are, what are they gonna be doing, what time of the year is gonna be done, the evaluation. A lot of these things weren't evaluated. When you're <coughs> suggesting that people who have paid parking spots in a parking lot, but are able to get a parking permit on the street for $100 when they have to pay for a parking that was stipulated for them, and we don't know, I think we have a problem. So how can you address a parking situation when we don't understand what the parking situation is? We haven't done our own research. We haven't put out surveys. We haven't matched the actual percentage of who's parking to what they're parking. So how can we make a decision as to where we're going if we don't do the research adequately? And you don't have to pay somebody 40 or $50,000 to do this. It's simple. I mean. A person's living there, he has a parking spot, and he's getting a, a parking permit for $100, but his car is registered in Asbury. We, we, it's simple uh, arithmetic. So we need to start looking at how we do these things and how we're gonna make decisions. I mean, can someone tell me why a person who is supposed to be parking is able to get a parking permit on the street outside his building, which takes up a parking spot in the downtown area. Let me answer that part. And I'll go on to other, my feelings on other things. I imagine the report you said you read was the Desmond report? Yes. Okay. Uh, nobody's supposed to get a parking permit if they have a spot that they can buy through. So if that's happening, that's happening wrongfully. And Michael, can you check into that tomorrow with our parking authority people? Because if way the ordinance reads, if you're able to obtain a spot in your building by paying, by whatever, you can't get a permit. So if that's being done, that's wrong. So that part I, you know, shouldn't be happening. The part where I agree with you on, and I've been saying it I think since 2013, is the downtown and now the beachfront is a mess where anybody that puts up any building doesn't have to provide parking. Right, okay, well, you, 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 okay. We'll, we'll stay on parking tonight. And I, I totally agree with you. I mean, it's something like we should, like I said moratorium, they tell me moratoriums are illegal. I say, let's change the master plan or the CBD plan or the beachfront redevelopment plan. Unless you're building residential, you have to provide no parking. I think that's ludicrous and it is going to be, like Mike said, it's crazy for downtown. If you look at the build out and if nobody has to provide parking, he's absolutely right. It's just it's going to catch us. Well, I'm surprised it hasn't caught us already. It's not built, uh, fine, but right now we haven't even matched, before we make that decision, we haven't matched up who's where and what they're doing. So I think we've done a better job than that of that 
with the parking committee and with the park with the ordinance we put in place and not addressing the issues of like how can you keep on building buildings and not provide parking how can you keep on opening up theaters and not provide parking like how are people going to go to the restaurants when there's no parking so well, the parking garage has 292 in there yeah and you guys are you guys are 165 uh you have 165 commitments off hours yeah off hours but right now even the study shows we're not maximizing or utilizing efficiency or even like a valet service but maximizing the capacity what we're using even though that even though they're two days a study which was ludicrous but we're not we haven't gone through that plan or even, I mean, we shouldn't even have to go through that plan. We see it to address these issues. But the Desmond report is three to four years old? Yeah. 2014. 2000, no. 2014, and it was released in 2015. Okay. When I was on the council, so I'm going to say between three and four years ago. Okay. And I think that report has mostly been, I'm going to say, Hate to say this word, ignored and changed, and the big changes in the last couple of months was bringing on the transportation planner, who's on top of this. And I know you've talked to him. And <coughs> oh yeah, he's doing. But it just seems like with that issue at the planning board, the discussion over parking, there was no information that he had, or was initially put, so he can make these decisions with that. Well, it's not just Mr. Sackman, it's everybody. It's, it, well, I mean, I'm not. It, it, I mean, it's, it's going to be the beachfront when iStar builds a hotel and puts in 20,000, and I'm going to be wrong now, 20,000 square feet of commercial space. It doesn't have to provide any parking. I mean, it's the same thing's going to happen on the beachfront, and we're not addressing it. I agree with you. And we, we have to start addressing it. And I've been saying it since I got elected in 2013. And again, I'm being told by everybody, you can't stop building, you can't change it. I don't know why you can't change laws. I mean, laws you were passed so you can change laws. You don't have laws. to give a variance if you do. If you did, you do have to give a variance. But, I mean, it needs to be researched. Right now, you don't have to give a variance. That means they can't build. They don't need a variance for parking. I know, but you reduced it, the amount of parking in the plan. That's what it said. In, in the plan, you guys reduced it already. No. I'll talk to you after the meeting, but we've never we've never changed anything because of the Desmond report as far as reducing like no, the, uh, the obli obligations. One to two, one to two, you know. But if you give a person comes in for a variance, or you saying you gonna you can put that money into escrow, you don't have to. You can say no. You can say no. Planning board can say no. Okay. We'll talk. <coughs> Thank you. Hi, Rita Morano, 8th Avenue. Uh, just to uh, Wait a second. Some, Happy birthday, Rita. Oh, thank you. Hey. Hey. She does all that the Empire State so. Shut up, Jerry, I don't need enemies, right? <laughs> uh, just to capitalize on what uh, Tracy said, I know of people that are renting out their garages and getting a permit here to park on a street. I know of two people, but, you know, I think it's something to look into. All you have to do is look at the permits and see where they live and see why they're not parking in their space. That's supposed to be d being done. Uh, Okay. Okay. The other thing I wanted to talk about was I've been looking at the last uh, school election and I see that District 4 is one of the districts that voted the most and that's in the pilot program district. Uh, it's kind of a weird setup. It goes all the way up Lake Avenue too. But I wanted to say that I don't think the people in the pilot program should be voting on a budget that they don't pay for. And it seems like they voted the most in this, and that won two to one. So I don't know what we could do about it. I called the county. They said it was up to 
the city council if they wanted to do something about that. I don't know what you could do. Probably have two ballots, I don't know. But I don't think they should be voting on the school budget. Either that or they start paying taxes on the school. Uh, I think that's one of the, I, I think something should be done about that because you, if you look at the voter list, I only have a brief thing here that, thank you, Cindy. Uh, but District 4 is like the main district here with all these people voting in it, and I'm sure they voted for the school budget because what do they care? I mean, I, I think you should look into that. And do uh, you have any, uh, well, I want you to answer me about that. And the other thing I wanted to say, I don't know if, Bel uh, if you know about Belmar, seven years in a row, no tax increase. I, I don't know what they're doing, but I wish we were doing it too. And the other thing, uh, the short-term rentals, have we made a decision on that, or that's not coming up yet, or is it the old one for this year, and what? And those are my questions. Uh, well, we'll do short-term rental first, Rita. We're still, Yvonne and I met with local realtors. We, we, this was the topic at the business committee. We're still information gathering. For this summer, I think we've said from the beginning that the summer CO applies, so you have to get a summer CO. So we, we actually said that pretty early on, the same rules of last year apply this year, even though we're probably going to vote on something this summer for next summer so people can prepare. Okay, it's very important that you do that. We are, we are. Yeah. We, we, I know, we because it's out of control we already. We continue to meet and have a dialogue about, about what's going on around town. Right. I, I mean, I, so far, next door to me has had two or three people every weekend. So I think it's very, very important. Too bad it didn't start this summer, but we'll hope for next summer. To, to get back to your question, as far as the... What? election and the ballots yeah I'm not even going to ask you who you talked to at the county because I don't want to know their name because they would probably be fired tomorrow okay. how can somebody at the county <laughs> say mayor and council can decide who votes that's the state legislation and that's like you know that's not decided by us it's an election everybody gets the right to vote no matter where you live in Asbury Park so whoever said that in the county probably should be fired so I, I don't want to know a name that's, that that's, the that's state law and federal law. If you live and you're a registered voter, you get to vote. I know you get to vote. Well, well we're not going to we, we, You can't suggest that we change that. Uh, well, I don't know, but they shouldn't be voting on the budget. I know uh, that. Uh, well, okay, well, well then let's call Beck, Downey, and Holdling and tell them to change the state law. I mean, and the, and the counter to that, Rita, is in theory, right, people who rent, people who don't own, so people who rent wouldn't, by, by your theory, be paying towards the school budget. So we're going to eliminate renters in Asbury Park from voting as well? <coughs> yeah, but listen, I sent my children to private school. Did I send them to The budget's everybody's vote. choice. It's on the ballot. Everybody has a chance to vote on it. If you looked at the number of people that voted for candidates, probably 50% didn't vote on the budget. So it's just something that happens, and next year you can campaign against it. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> it's your birthday, but you can't change the rules. <laughs> okay, good try. Hello, Mayor and Council, Jerry Scarano, Long Branch. Um, it was on the news earlier this week, I think Monday, Jersey City's talking about maybe they shouldn't be offering pilot programs anymore because of the new 50-story building that's going up in Jersey City. i just like to see if you could look into what Jersey City's doing because they're going to start, well, they want to do away with pilot programs. The other thing is... Um, Are you guys having the department head meetings? Are they being recorded or who takes the minutes? And it's a way for the public to see how they talk about how they're saving money because like Belmar, even Long Branch managed not to have a tax increase this year. So if other towns are following suit, maybe we could do something here. But it all starts from the top down 
and the business, I mean, the department heads, you need to talk about it. Now, I happened to be with Rita when we were told about people live in the condos, they rent out their parking spots to other people in the building, and then they get the permits to park on the street. Um, that's the story I heard. Um, oh, I didn't know we had a new rule. You can get up twice to talk at a meeting. But that being said, the future is not here about people lo borrowing cars and not owning cars. Right now, we have a parking crisis, and that's what we have to deal with today because we don't know what tomorrow is going to bring. But we know in the past, parking spots were given up by the council because they were in a rush to build, and we it's not working, the parking problem. People say they ride around, and then they go to other towns. Well, I figure they're missing a good time in Asbury if they can't park outside the meter area and walk. And then, um, are we, do we have a budget committee? Is it set up yet? So could you help me out with those questions? You done? Uh, budget committee's in the works. If Councilwoman Chapman's not here tonight, she wants to be the one to announce it, since so that, that's in the works. Uh, hold on one second. Wednesday, June 7th, 5.30 p.m., City Manager's Conference Room, Parking Committee. Everybody's so concerned, please show up. So Ready to write that down? Yeah. <laughs> the first Wednesday of every month, 5.30, City Manager's Conference Room, 5.30, public, and anybody can show up and we see the same concerns and it's the kid That's a committee good idea. makes recommendations to the administration, to the council. So you don't have to wait to come here. Uh, so I appreciate that, Jerry. I forget your other questions. Michael, you, you can answer about the staff meetings. Yes, we do staff meetings. No, they're not recorded. They're not recorded? Well, no. Then how do you analyze what was talked about? Everybody has perfect memory? Well, minutes are taken. Who, are the minutes being taken? I'm sure, yes. No, but he no, said, no. Shh. I'm sure you not make notes, notes of it's, things. It's, it's notes. not a good system. Right. Yeah, not it's, official. There's notes. But recording. And the public I, I, never finds out um, on how we can. If people see what's going on, transparency, maybe they can find ways to save money. I mean, there's no reason to keep going up. It's not like we have. If other towns can keep their tax level, I think we should be able to do it. And then I think what Rita meant to say about the pilot program and the voting on the school budget, I think the connection is if everybody should be paying school taxes and there should be no pilot program that allows them not to pay school taxes because she feels maybe if they were paying school taxes, the vote would have, the turnout, I don't know where she got her information from, but the bottom line is her theory is if they were paying school taxes, they probably would have voted no on the budget. That's it. And thank you for listening to me. Okay, have, thank you. And, and everybody have a good Mother's Day as a mom here. Thank you. And, and I just got to address it because it comes up too often. Like, and I, I, don't, I don't know. It just doesn't sink in. We're sitting on transitional aid. We keep on taking the money from Trenton. We cannot reduce or level taxes. We have to raise taxes. So, I mean, you guys can get up to the microphone and bash me all you want and say, no, reduce, no, 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 no. okay, what, say, say reduce taxes, and I'll say, fine, then we're not gonna take the million dollars from the state and your taxes are gonna go up even more. So, like, until we get off the state aid, we cannot stabilize. I'm never gonna say reduce taxes because any politician that says they're reducing taxes is lying to you. On the state level, the county level, the federal level, the city level, be it Belmar, be it Long Branch, you know, Sometimes numbers can be manipulated where it shows like there's a, a decrease for seven years in a row or 10 years in a row or one year in a row. But meanwhile, the sewer tax went up or this went up, someplace else it went up. People at one meeting said we raised the sewer tax the past three years. There's been suggestions by the administration to raise the sewer tax and this council has fought it because we're raising regular taxes. Was it the fiscally right thing to do? We survived and we're making do to buy it, but uh, we, there was no way we were gonna hit the taxpayers with two taxes in the same year. So 
We are we all paid the same taxes. We're concerned about the tax rate. I went up, I think, twenty nine dollars for the average house this year. I don't remember. Okay, whatever went up. Twenty nine. And it's going to go up next year too for all the state aid. And no, I, no, I know that, Jerry. No, I didn't when bash. That's just a word. But I mean, it, it's, as long as I sit up here and we're on state aid, I've got to make that statement. We have to, and that's the state saying: you want our money, you have to. It's something. That's why we want to get off of state aid as quick as possible, so we don't have to. Understand a little bit better. Okay. Well, thank you. Hello, Lisa Simmons, School Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, first. Oh, Felicia Simmons, Sewell Avenue, Asbury Park. Um, I'm first, just to really say thank you for um, all the support I got for the city and um, throughout my um, stint on the school board. And second, I'm here to um, address um, from a new correlated group um, throughout Asbury Park and Neptune, um, saying that we are coming together with different organizations um, to address the racial tension and the racial divide and diversity throughout the city. Um, recently in the last, I say week or two, I came across a um, tape, um, Quality of Life um, throughout Asbury Park. And I was extremely concerned because I watched the whole movie and I seen not even a person that had a deep tan in it. Um, I don't know exactly where the ca um, tape came from. I don't know exactly its emblem with the city's logo. But I, I'm saying as a person from the city that we are a diversity. And anything that is put out there to address the city or to represent the city should be diverse also. Um, it's disturbing um, to lifelong Asbury Park members and other members who would like to be part of Asbury Park who is not represented in this um, video, um, depicted right here on property with the mobile um, library and throughout other parts of the city. Um, I, I think y'all need to address it. If y'all have not seen it, y'all need to see it. And wherever it came from, it should be dispersed because it spoke about a school district and it did not have a minority child in it. It didn't have a minority person in the whole video. And it's, again, concerning. And then also to address um, about the school budget. Here's a secret, even though it is on our ballot that comes with the April election, no matter if you voted down or you voted up, because you're a city on transitional aid and we're a school <coughs> district on, trans on um, aid and also uh, with a state monitor, it will pass no matter if we vote yes or no. The state will still pass it. That's just a fact. And um, we're doing our best. There is no deficit this year even though we did have to go, they did have to go up on the um, increase, which increased our tax load by $29. Um, it will continue to go up until we kind of transition off of state funding, which will be impossible. So that's just a little bit about the budget voting and that's part of voting in April, instead of voting in November where it just passes automatically without a question. But I'm just also just sitting here addressing you as the coalition from Neptune and Asbury, saying that we're going to work diligently to continue to work for diversity and representation in the city of Asbury and Neptune. What's the name of the group? Hmm? What's the name of the group? Very good. And thank you for your five years of service on the Board of Education. And does anybody have a clue about the tape she's talking about? Because I don't. I have it on my phone with a calculator. Okay. Well, I don't, you know me and cell phones. Send it to somebody who can figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, yeah, I'm curious. And when your coalition meets, of course, we would like to be invited. We sure would. Thank you. Close. Move it. Second. 
We'll move on to minutes. We have three sets of minutes this evening. Executive session minutes of April 26, 2017. Workshop minutes of April 26 of 2017. And regular uh, meeting minutes of April 26, 2017. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We have three resolutions for a consent agenda this evening. We have resolution 2017-155, which is a resolution approving special events applications. Can oops, resolution 2017-156 word a contract for regional contribution agreement? And this is uh, for 1215 Summerfield Avenue. And then can I have a uh, resolution 2017 and 157 resolution authorizing municipal tax collector to prepare and uh, mail estimated bills in accordance with PL 99, bleh, 994 chapter 72. Can I have a motion to approve those uh, resolutions, please? Move it. Second. <laughs> Councilmember Chapman? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Or Clayton, I'm sorry. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to individual resolutions. Resolution 2017-158, resolution amending temporary budget appropriations for 2017 budget. Can I have a motion to approve, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-159, resolution authorizing the payment of bills. Can I have a motion, please? Move, Move it. it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-160, resolution authorizing the issuance of not to exceed $7 million tax ant anticipation notes to 2017 of the City of Asbury Park, County Monmouth, State of New Jersey. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-161, resolution of the City of Asbury Park, County of Monmouth, State of New Jersey, authorizing compensation payment to Anthony Salerno upon his separation of employment. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. May I have a second? Second. Comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-162, authorizing a contract for an extended warranty for existing parking meters. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Resolution 2017-163, resolution of the Mayor and Council of the City of Asbury Park acting as the redevelopment entity authorizing lease agreement with Asbury Partners LLC for the installation of temporary restroom trailers on identified property within a waterfront redevelopment area. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Can I have a second? Move it. Second. You say second. Second. Yeah. <laughs> Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-164, authorizing the City of Asbury Park to implement the competitive contact, contracting process to procure vendors to operate a concession involving rentals of stand-up paddle boards, kayaks, and other recreational devices to the public in a designated area on Deal Lake. Can I have a motion to move the resolution, please? Move it. Move. Second. Any comments or questions? Yes, just what we discussed at the work session will be incorporated. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-165, resolution appointing the city public defender. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. 
Yes, please. Thank you, Brush. Yep. I don't have a solution in front of me. <laughs> Ron Tropoli. Oh, okay. <laughs> it was the has been the easiest thing about the thing. Love those computers. Oh, stop. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. 2017-166, resolution appointing the city code enforcement prosecutor. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. And that's James Butler. Any comments or questions? Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-167, resolution appointing alternate city prosecutor. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. And that is who? <laughs> Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Resolution 2017-168, resolution appointing city prosecutor. Can I have a motion, please? Move it. Second. And this is also James Butler. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. We're on to ordinances, introduction. Ordinance 2017-21, Ordinance of the City of Asbury Park in the County of Monmouth State, New Jersey, providing for special emergency appropriations in an amount not to exceed 370000 to fund cont contractually required severance liabilities resulting from retirement of employees. Can I have a motion to introduce this uh, ordinance 2017-21? Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? No. Public hearing is scheduled for May 24, 2017. <coughs> ordinance 2017 22, bond ordinance amending and supplementing bond ordinance number 2910, which provides for sanitary and storm sewer improvements, herefore finally adopted by the City of Asbury Park in the County of Monmouth, State, New Jersey on June 9, 2009, to amend the description set forth therein. I have a motion to introduce this ordinance, please? Move it. Second. Questions? Go ahead. What does it mean? This was the original Springwood Avenue ordinance in, in that section of town where the sanitary lines were improved and all the other capital improvements. Um, there's no more sewer What's the amount? There's after Springwood Avenue is done by the railroad tracks, the, the improvement it might be three to five hundred thousand. And it can only be used for sewer work? Anywhere in the city, yes. But just sewer. It couldn't be used to pave streets. No. Okay. Thank you. Councilmember Clayton? Yes. Councilmember Kendall? No. Deputy Mayor Quinn? Yes. Mayor Moore? Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for May 24, 2017. Ordinance 2017-23, authorizing the City of Asbury Park to convey an easement over certain portions of public right-of-way area and adjacent <coughs> property located at 1003 Bond Street, Block 2703, Lot 2, formerly known as Block 167, Lot 1.02. Have a motion, please? Move it. Second. Question. Go ahead. Does this have the dollar amount in it? It does. Where? It's twelve thousand, like nine hundred, right? Yes. Yeah. Probably, right. Right. probably right in front of it. Second, whereas quote on the second page. I see it. Okay. And Thank also you. Also in paragraph 
paragraph number one. Of the Got it. Okay, thank you. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Public hearing for this ordinance is scheduled for May 24, 2017. Adoption public hearing ordinances. 2017-18 ordinance amending the city of Asbury Park's land development regulations chapter 30 specifically amending accessory uses for the LI zone and prohibiting commercial drive throughs in a B2 zone. I have a motion to open this ordinance to the public please. Move it. Second. Sure. Anybody like to be heard on this? Motion to close. Move, Move it. it. Second. I have a motion to adopt Ordinance 2017-18. Move it. Second. Councilmember Clayton. Yes. Councilmember Kendall. Yes. Deputy Mayor Quinn. Yes. Mayor Moore. Yes. Motion to adjourn, please. Move it. Second. Thank you.